Ladies and gentlemen, episode, uh, well, I can't say episode two, but we're on a double header tonight. Episode so you, nine. Episode, well, no, I mean like episode two of the night. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because we're on a double header tonight. You're not going to hear this until the week after, though. But um, yeah, so we're on a double header. Anyways, uh, sponsors, um, audibletrial.com slash whiskey babble. Uh, go there, 150,000 titles. Um, Matt knows your spiel better than me, Matt. Let me hear it. Uh, audible.com is the best source of spoken word products. Um, over 180,000 different titles to choose from. How uh, many? 180,000. Oh my gosh. Yep. Uh, audibletrial.com slash whiskey babble gets you a free 30 day trial and a free audiobook download. Woohoo. We're also brought to you by Mamut Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Anaheim, California. Um, that is Mamut, M A M U T E B J J dot com. Uh, it's ran by Bruno Mamut, which is uh, Portuguese for mammoth because he's a massive, massive human. And um, I mean a, that in a good a way. Good name. I mean that in a good way, right? It's, I thought it was pretty cool. And um, it's a great jujitsu academy. He's a two stripe black belt, um, I believe, under Sousa. But don't hold I me don't to that. I don't know what that means. Don't hold the. That's the. That was his original instructor. Oh. I believe he was under Sousa. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. I'm sure I'll hear get shit for it at class. But um, yeah, if anybody is interested, uh, you just go in there. You mention Whiskey Babble, you get a week for free. Um, which could, if anybody knows it, I think it's like a $30 mat fee anywhere else you go to, if you want to just go try it out. So, um, you get a week for free. If you mention whiskey babble, um, go there, give it a try. If you're scared or confused or anything like that, I'm usually there about three times a week. Um, you can just ask for me and, uh, you know, I'll show you around. I'm not claiming to be an expert or anything, but I can figure out where the mat is and I know where the, uh, instructor is and everything. Um, tonight we are drinking... Midnight Moon. Now, I I was a rookie because we're doing a double header tonight, and I didn't bring two bottles of whiskey. So um, I remember my luckily, first time. Luckily, Pat, whose lovely home we are filming at right now, Pat was our go-kart guest, um, the one that couldn't remember Lord Hesmith. And um, <laughs> do you even hear me? No. You know, no. I didn't care. Wow, he ain't care. He ain't care. Now he's dropping some Ken Block on me. That's cool, bro. Hot stuff that's, that's coming whatever. through. Strong. That's whatever. Ain't care, bro. You didn't th- th- think I knew that? Yeah, that's pretty strong that you knew that. Okay. I'm actually really impressed. The Hoonigans, bro. And um, <laughs> anyways, Ugh. so Midnight Moon, a uh, few family recipes carry a jail sentence. Ooh. That's but, heavy. That's heavy right there. I know. But to Junior Johnson's family, it was a way of life. With the law on his heels, Junior ran the finest moonshine to the dry rural south. Midnight Moon follows the Johnson family. Small batch recipe. It's a proudly made by our very own hands and crafted with all natural, real fruit. So I've been working on my, I, when I drive to work, I talk to myself and I do my own like, <laughs> today I figured out I could kind of do a Jason Statham. If I really, if it's, I really, it's not bad. I mean, if I really kind of got, and sometimes I can do Peter Griffin if I really try, but, um, no, nope, that was not even close. See, you did like, it good the other night. I know. So it's gotta be like, like my name is Peter. <clears throat> my name is Peter Griffin. I got to nope, like, I don't nope. know. It's got to be perfect. And I got to talk, talk out of the side of my mouth, but, it's, but you're I not, I you're not on it tonight. A really good Jason Statham. If that's, I really that one, that one's pretty good. It. Yep. You know what I mean? It's tell, on, it's on fleek. Tell me where the drugs are. You know that's what I mean? That's, like, on, just, that's on fleek. I figured I could do it. Um, okay guys. Well, welcome to whiskey babble. Babble. Tonight's guest is Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Hey, how's it going? Um, Ashley, I went, um, I was told to go to your Facebook to learn about you. Some things that I learned. Um, hmm, hmm. Graphic design, singing, director of first impressions. I'm not going to mention <laughs> the business. Um, I'm surprised it didn't say photographer and Instagram model also because... Ah. I feel like you've kind of got the whole gambit. Of, you're not wrong. Of uh, the whole <laughs> you're gambit. Not, you're not. Uh, how old are you again? I'm 21. The almost whole, 22. The whole gambit of 21 year old professions on Facebook. There, she wears a lot of hats. Okay. That's right. You know, jack of all trades. Right? <laughs> Never Am have I too right? many. Um. Anyways. Uh. So what? What do you do? Well, I, as you said, I'm the director of first impressions for a uh, financial advisory firm. Now, what does that mean? Basically. 
I'm a receptionist. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not as don't you know, try to pretty it up, boy. It's dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. You know, I answer I, the phone. I did not and... think that's where that was going to go. No, I didn't think it'd be receptionist. Well, either. you know, it's an important job. Let's no, I'm not. Around. I'm not saying that. I'm just. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was something completely different. <laughs> Yeah, so did I. <laughs> I, wanna, I well, what, now I'm curious what you what you thought. No, that's well, okay, no, I don't. Was. I didn't have a thought. Like I didn't. I just first impressions. I never Such entered an my mind. Title. Like, like what you would do though. It I is an like, interesting title, and I've never heard of it before. And the reason why I thought it was going somewhere else is because typically in my profess- profession, the word director implies that you have quite a few people underneath you. Power. <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> like you send out like little smile goblins to like. <laughs> Goblin. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just talking. <laughs> Smile we're on, goblins. We're on our second episode here. All right. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. Hopefully, we get some content. But, um, but yeah. So yeah, like, uh, I don't know what I, I didn't have a thought. It's like when you hear something and you're like, oh, this person does this, and you're like, oh, that's cool. They do this, but you know, yeah. I don't know how to explain it. Do yeah. You? Well, basically, I just, an- I answer the phones. I, I'm basically the, uh, the head guy's assistant. Uh, um. So I, I help him out with his personal it. matters as well as. You know, work matters. I do the scanning. I uh, follow up with the uh, the clients as well as the carriers, stuff like that. Very cool. Very cool. Now, um, it says here that you do graphic design as well. I do. That's kind of uh, at a hiatus right now. I. It's a good word. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Hiatus. Hiatus. I like that word. Um, yeah. So I, I'm just really busy with work right now. I I work at uh, you know this advisory firm during the week and then most weekends I'm either racing go-karts much like Mr. Britton vroom vroom um, vroom vroom uh, or I'm working at the at the racetrack whether it's for the racetrack or for um, a kart shop working <laughs> working working um, no, 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 that's cool. But, but what is... God <laughs> damn, why am I here? No, no, no not, not you. It's, it's, I think he's talking about the go-karts. Oh. What? Were, were, you, were you talking down on go-karts? Or no, just... I was implying prostitution. Oh, oh like, my like, God. Wow. That is not wow. at all we went that joke. direction this quickly. Well, right? oh, I was trying to make it funny. It wasn't funny. That's, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's fine. It's there myself. are a lot of corners on the racetrack. See, that's so. what I'm saying. Wow. There you go, right? <laughs> <laughs> zing, zing, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, what? Uh, but when when you are doing graphic design, what is what does that entail? What is that? What is that? I, I have no idea. So teach me something. Um, well, I'm I'm obviously just studying right now. But basically, what my initial plan was to go into um, branding and and helping uh, companies find their branding, image. Is whether that it's like cattle branding, not quite. You know, image maybe branding. anything for design. Ah, um, <laughs> but I just wanted to clarify. So would somebody come to you and go? Hey Ashley, this is this. This is my product. Um, make me a logo and get me on a website. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, logo design is huge. Uh, creating letterheads, uh, business cards, all of it. Basically, your your starter package for a business. Now, was there any type of like? Um, did you have to have any type of like artistic education in this or? Yeah, I mean, um, the classes that I was taking, um, are basically everything: art history, uh, calligraphy, you name it. Anything in the art world, you take the class. It's geared towards your major. Anything you can learn whether it's related to your major is going to be beneficial now did you get any type of degree or no i'm still working on that i actually went to a junior college for two years uh and then decided to go to a university but it's a private university it's actually back in san francisco um which is very close to where i'm from and uh oh yeah i have bay Bay area written on here bay area are you an ace fan oh big time oh yeah fucking right do raiders fan too Uh, unfortunately (laughs) <laughs> hey, it's a rebuilding year. I actually, year. God, my key fu- Yeah, every year since 1970 has been a rebuilding year for the hey, fucking Hey, Raiders. hey, hey, I think we won a Super Bowl in the 80s. Let's uh, calm down. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we still have Oakland. You know, That's underdogs. Like, underdogs. The Bay Area, dude. What was that? Was that um, I watched a whole documentary on, was a hyphy that came out of Oakland. Why is it fucking retarded? Hyphy? Yeah. Hyphy movement? Yeah. Oh, go stupid, dumb, and hyphy. It's fucking retarded. It's like, it's like saying hella from NorCal. Yeah. Hella. That's so hella cool. Punch everybody in the that's face. That's hella dude. janky. <laughs> this is hurting my head. It's just a whole other language. You I li- just have I, to I literally get can't even 
right now. Ah, uh, literally. You can't even. I've gone full blown white girl. I literally can't even. Well, this is you know the way she talks brings me back to the whole Tumblr movement that we oh. talked about earlier. <laughs> I love me fucking, some Tumblr. Yeah, fuck me for being a cis male. Like you know that I actually googled what cis meant. Do you know what it means? Mm-mm. Cis means. Listen to fucking that. I've, Tumblr's retarded. Cis <laughs> cis means that you identify with the gender that you were assigned at birth. Like it's a negative thing. Like because I was assigned a male because I have male genitalia and I identify as a male, I'm cis and I'm like looked down upon by the fucktards on Tumblr. You're so because you're person, you're Jake. the stereotypical male? Yes, like I'm actually like I'm I'm looked down upon. And it's funny cuz I read this whole thing about how everybody and it was this <laughs> it was this quote from the guy that started Tumblr. And it's like <laughs> Tumblr started by like a Christian cis male that started this website and all the people fucking hate him and they don't even know it. And he started the website. But um, but I hear you delve into the world of Tumblr. Mm. Is, it, is that like the Batman I quote? I do. What do you, like what? Uh, live long enough to see yourself so become, become the, the villain. <laughs> <laughs> the villain. It's always dark. It's just before the dawn. <laughs> but but um, no, but like, I, yeah, I read this whole article and it's just like Tumblr drives me fucking apeshit, dude. Like when they post like the picture of, did you see that one? Um, it's the big thing going around right now where they posted that picture of, uh, the fucking PETA ad and it's like, this is what your lamb looks like sheared. And it's this dude holding like a bloody lamb. And then all these people, like there was like the original first 20 comments that were like, you know, you guys are monsters for like wanting to wear wool. And then like the, uh, the following comments were like, um, yeah, I'm a farmer (laughs) and like, it's actually healthy for them to get sheared. Like it's dangerous if they don't get sheared. And then like all the logical people start coming in. That's like, if if, like a human never gets a haircut, it's just, well, yeah. But then it resorts to like them calling them names. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) Oh, you're a fucking hand plant. What did you, it's a very, very fat person and shit Lord. Shit Lord. (laughs) I don't know why that one gets me every time, dude. <laughs> Shit, Lord. Shit, Lord. But um, no, Rogan was talking about the, the whole hand planet, and he's talking about, like, um, because he goes on Tumblr, and he's like, fuck that. He's like, I totally believe in fat shaming. Like, and he started, like, <laughs> he started, like, ripping on him, dude. And, like, it was, it was bad. Because he always <laughs> talks about Chris Christie. And he's like, that fat fuck. He's like, I want this. God, oh. speaking of that, okay. So I don't know if you guys some unhealthy have, fuck leading our country. Do you guys do you guys, you, who, you, know, you guys know who you guys know who Chris Christie is? <laughs> oh yeah, who? brother Chris what? Christie. Yeah, Chris Christie. Do you, no, you guys? No, no, no. He's the governor of New Jersey. He, yeah, he's mm. the governor of New Jersey. He's a, a giant. Sounds human being. He's huge. He's like morbidly obese. He oh. spent this recently just oh, yeah. came out. He spent eighty three thousand dollars of taxpayer money on food at NFL games. <laughs> <laughs> Chili dogs, this guy happened. It ain't cheap to be 400 pounds. I, okay, like, it's an investment. It, 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 it never says, you know, the time frame. I've never heard the time frame. It could have been least. like, yeah, they never said like could five be, years. It could or be one spread year out or along, whatever. you know, five, six years or something like that. And, but still, $83,000 of taxpayer money on food from NFL games. I don't know. I can, I can believe that. Does that include beer? I don't know. Who knows? Probably. That's just, expensive. Just, 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 look at him, yeah. dude. He's a walking coronary He's waiting a to happen. He's a giant, giant human being. That's, I don't know. That's too bad. He's so, like the poster child for big and tall. What? So what's the draw? <laughs> <laughs> what's the draw for Tumblr? What? What? Why do you go on it? Um, I originally. I hate that is site. It be, Fucking. Is hate it that because site. it's not mainstream? Maybe it is though. Mainstream. How do you? How do you drown a hipster? <laughs> not this. I don't know how. In the mainstream. <laughs> How many hipsters does it take to change a light bulb? None. It's a really obscure number. You've probably never heard of it. Uh, that's true. <laughs> that's, good. that's a good one. That's, that's a good so one. good. But what's, so what's the draw to it though? Like, um, honestly, I originally created a Tumblr to post the music that I wrote. Um, oh, that's right. I have singing here. Yeah. So you're a singer as well. We'll touch on I that am. in a moment. Um, but yeah, it was. I, I used. A, uh, an alias that nobody would know me by. It wasn't for any type of recognition. I would never post a picture of my face. Um, it was just, you know, an outlet for me. You know, this is where I post my music. This is where I find inspirational quotes or funny pictures. Um, GIFs. 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 We had a whole, we had a whole GIFs. discussion on how that was pronounced. Because GIFs. GIF is spelled GIF. GIF is a peanut butter. J-I-F. Thank J-I-F, you. J-I-F. Peanut butter. Yeah. So it's got to be a GIF. GIF. I was pro GIF, and then somebody did the peanut butter argument on me, and and you're like, damn it, they're right. Like fucking <laughs> logic. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this logic bullshit. <laughs> Call the it's scientists. Tumblr, you don't need to have logic. <laughs> Call the lab. Does that math add up? So what kind of <laughs> now? What kind of um? When you say singing, because we had a guest on here that was actually a 
I mean, he was actually in a couple of prominent bands, and then he actually toured and did everything. Oh, what wow. now? What's what's your your experience with it? What? Um, I used to be in a band in high school. Played a couple local shows. Nothing, nothing huge. I tried out for American Idol once. Oh, there you go. Never you do TV? it again. No, no, yeah. it's not what you think it is. They I heard, definitely. I heard oh, I know. Like it's like, like I, you audition in front of like what three people it's... before you could even get in front of the judges. So yeah. basically, when I did it, I was in San Francisco at the time, and uh, it was at the Giants Stadium. I I don't know what it's called. Stadium arena. Giant I don't know. Stadium. Whatever. Giant stadium. Giants place in San Francisco. Stadium. Anyway, so what they do is there's, you know, 40,000 plus people there Mm -hmm. in the stands and they have nine tents set up and there's two to three producers in each of the tents. And what they have you do is they line you up and um, they'll have five people in a row and you each step forward. They'll tell you when to step forward and when to step back, basically when to start and stop. And uh, I only got about a 10 second audition because I was near the back of the group. So it was just crappy. I think everybody goes into it thinking like, oh, I'm going to meet, you know, Jeff yeah, Lopez. Or, they don't show a lot of it. Yeah. It, there's a whole, and there's, there's so many auditions before you even get on TV and a contract right. you have to sign. It's just, it's not what you think it is. They, they actually started showing that aspect a little more. I think this year I so noticed. Last oh, wow. now, yeah, no, I, I stopped watching some because, of it because they would show like them in front of these three random yeah. freaking people. So, so, and it's stupid because I remember I was sitting on Muni, which was like the local transportation system. Uh, and I remember seeing this kid dressed up as a monkey. And I'm like, I swear to God, if that kid <laughs> makes it through and I don't, I'm going to be pissed. Sure enough, saw him on freaking television in his stupid ass monkey costume. <laughs> like, are you serious? Like, it's all just entertainment. It's bullshit. It's so stupid. I went to I went to school with a girl that made it to the finals. Really? Yeah. Aww. That's cool. You think I could say her name or, is it, or should I not? Mm. I don't know. Does Who she cares? listen to the podcast? I don't know. Probably not. Her <laughs> it's name, like promotional, right? No, her name, was, her name was Lisa Tucker. And she was on one of like the fifth or sixth season. She was in the top three, I think. Really? She made it like all that the way high? to the top wow. three. That's and cool. um wow. Yeah, she was. She was. Well, I mean, she was like bred for it. When we were in grade school, she'd miss half the year because she was Nala in The Lion King. On, on, <laughs> no what? way. Yeah. She was Nala in The Lion King until she got like too big to be Nala. And really? Then, yeah. And then she, I know, like, I know what high school she went to and everything. And then she was still singing while she was in high school. And then after high school was done, she decided to audition for American Idol. Wow. And then she auditioned and made it. Like I said, she was in like the top three or something like that. That's pretty cool. Wow. But, but um, what does she do now? Like, Broadway she still sings. Or? No, I was, it was kind of funny. I want to say like six years ago, a while back ago. I was in the gym because because I was in the gym and I didn't know she lived in that city that I was at and I was working out in the mm-hmm. gym and she came walking in. She's like, "Oh, hi, Jake!" And I was like, "Oh, hey!" Like, looks completely different because last time I saw her was in grade school, right? And um, looks completely different. And I ended up talking to her and I was like, "So, what are you doing now?" And she's like, "Um, I'm actually working with a producer in London right now because she was telling me that like the music scene in America is just like crap. it's shit. It's such crap. Mm-hmm. Everybody, it's all, it's all business." Yeah, everybody mm-hmm. goes to other countries, and she's like, yeah, I've been working with this producer in London, and I've been doing this, so that's all I heard that she was like, huh. last time she was working in London to try to get her music career up, but, but that's pretty interesting. I thought that was pretty cool. That's really cool. So, a lot of great artists come out of the UK. I mean, a lot of like back. my top five are from the UK. <laughs> this is America. Take it back. <laughs> uh, half my family lives in the UK, so oh, I'm, I'm kind of biased. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> How do they enjoy their lack of freedom? <laughs> like, oh. these, these colors don't run. Oh, the fields. These colors don't run. <laughs> I have a friend who's Scottish, and he, uh, we always joke with him, like, oh, you still don't have your freedom. Sorry, yeah. buddy. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> they voted against freedom last year. Yeah. yeah. Against it? Scotland. No, we don't want really? that. We don't want well, that. Yeah. You didn't hear about that? No. Do you know yeah. that Braveheart is one of the most inaccurate movies ever made? No, don't tell me that. No, no it's actually like, like documentation. It. So like, is Top Gun. Really? Oh. Yeah. No way. There's a lot of really inaccurate stuff in Top Gun. Stop it. It's, what were you doing? it's so well, good. Just well, we were it. actually, we were inverted. And what were you doing? <laughs> we were keeping up foreign relations. You know, giving him the finger. Oh, sorry. It does that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know your, you got to know your movies, bro. I love Top oh, Gun. Man. I still love the movie. It's inaccurate as hell. Yeah, but, but they, but there's like a whole thing. Like you can read like actual articles just breaking apart Braveheart and how really? terribly just mm. not like about the main character specifically or everything the about whole it plot. the whole revolt how William Wallace wasn't even like that how um uh the British weren't even like on the island at that time no and like, like it's, 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 everything it's, is just wrong everything's completely fake about it like it's just completely like <laughs> historically inaccurate but, but it did so what it was good. supposed to do it entertained 
And that's right. what like that's what I get in arguments with people about about movies and like video games and stuff like that. Like Call of Duty. I got friends that fight me on Call of Duty. And I'm like, well, dude, like it does what it's supposed to do. It entertains me. It's not supposed to be like some historically crap. accurate <laughs> down yeah, to the it does, it, And it makes me happy for an hour. Here's the thing. Yeah. Like, it's a video game. It's a fucking video <laughs> game. <laughs> dude. Right. Like, well, it's nothing like, you know, Final Fantasy. Ugh. It's like, no. It's Final like, Fantasy. People who take <laughs> themselves that seriously, though, like. Oh, oh yeah. So over a video game, nonetheless. Uh, so I was told um, to get this story out. Well, no, actually, let's 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 hold on that one. I want to wait for that one. <laughs> Um, <laughs> tell me about racing. So you do what Pat does. But yeah, just not as good. Well, oh. I'm <laughs> stroking. No, I meant like Pat. Pat has been referred to in some circles as the Kanye West of go the Kanye West of go kart racing. That's no, I've that's heard. just what he calls himself. No, he's been not even one. he's been referred to in some circles as the Kanye West. Of go-kart I was racing. watching Pat. I was watching a video on YouTube, in and I was circles. watching one of Pat race, and I actually. Watching him, I saw myself float out of my I body, saw and I hovered over my own body while I was watching Pat race. It was it was pretty amazing. <laughs> Are you channeling your inner Dale? Like, yeah, what was what that? Is. You know what? It's fun. Have you ever had that experience? Like, you feel like you're outside of your body. Um, mm. I've done it when I'm so tired, like, and I've like no. I felt like I was like I don't know. Maybe like am I going like too spiritual here? Like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm I'm just trying to think if I've ever had that, and I I can't remember a specific time where no, that was a thing. So no, my answer is no. <laughs> okay, but so so back to our, <laughs> just, back to our just topic human. though. What's the what's the racing scene like scene like for uh for females? Is it I mean because because Pat broke it down in his own way about you know how hard it is to get to the upper divisions like like I don't know like the Danica Patricks or whatever. Mm -hmm. What's the scene like for women on your level? Like, is it are there a lot? I mean, I'm not I know nothing, so please don't take offense to anything if I'm if I'm being offensive when I say it. I know jack shit about this. (laughs) That's why we're that's kind of why we do this podcast. Yeah, because it's a learning. We know like a lot a little bit about a lot of stuff, Mm -hmm. but yeah. That's that's where it kind of stops. So what? So like when you show up to race, are there are, is there, I don't know, fifteen women out there to race with you? No, I think fifteen is a very high number. Uh, basically, you're looking know. at uh, two about a hundred people in a field, and, and I'd say room. maybe, maybe <laughs> six girls show up. I mean, at least at the level that I'm at, um, it's a it's a little bit different. It's definitely um, obviously a more male dominated sport. But the level that I'm at, Fuck I'd yeah. say about. <laughs> but that's why it's so great to race as a girl because you go out there and if you're any good, you don't have to be the best. But if you're any good, you're gonna beat you know 80 guys. Well, here's the thing, dude. Women are fucking monsters, and I mean that in a good way. I mean they go through childbirth, they raise the children. I mean you look at people. We like, bleed once a month. There you go. Yeah. That's all you. Never trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't, doesn't die. die. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but like you look at like Ronda, like Ronda Rousey, bears. yeah, it's true. But like Ronda Rousey, for example, <laughs> one of the most dominant fighters in UFC history. Yeah. I think she's pound for pound one of the best fighters on the planet. Female, I, I would be scared shitless to get in the ring with her. She would there was you. a rumor <laughs> that she was wanting to fight Mayweather. No, nah, Mayweather. I don't know if you heard about that. I don't well, know if it was completely false, but well, no. Here's what happened, and here's actually what happened. Um, Mayweather was talking shit on Ronda Rousey for whatever reason. He was just being a dick. He was being Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> Pat, you might want to listen to this one. So, <laughs> oh, great. so Floyd Mayweather was talking shit on Ronda Rousey. And Ronda said to Floyd, the only way you'll ever kick my ass is if I marry you. <gasps> well, because well, he's a woman beater, <laughs> Cause right? Because he beats his wife and yeah. he beats his girlfriends. And he, and, <laughs> he said that, though? Yeah, no, she said that to him. Oh, I was going to say I'm like. No, no, no. So, so Floyd Mayweather, dude. <laughs> Now, I'm not taking anything away from the guy. That's fantastic. The dude, the dude can fucking box. Oh, yeah. But he is a piece of shit He's a human. Dick. If you, piece of mm, shit. If you look at his Instagram, it, I feel stupid for saying this, but if you look at his Instagram in comparison with like Pacquiao's, for example, Pacquiao's got like, oh, me and my family are going to church. And then well, you know, they were just like, look at all my money. <laughs> like, well, you know, Pacquiao's very, uh, it's like new news is coming out now that Pacquiao is very, uh, promiscuous on his wife <gasps> no yeah, don't tell me that it's like actually a big deal <laughs> like, oh god but um wow now i feel like an I don't, ass I don't, 
really follow the boxing scene. <clears throat> well, Floyd, well, Floyd, like I say, Floyd's the biggest piece of shit ever. And I was, I read this whole article about it was like into the psychology of Floyd Mayweather, and it was this whole thing about how like he validates himself by his like money and like his monetary purchases, <laughs> and like that's what makes him feel like a human is like going out and buying like a five hundred thousand dollar watch. <laughs> Like that's that's that's, that's that, like completely opposite. Well, that's what people you know people are different. Right? Who knows yeah. what this guy went through growing up? But he's a piece of shit. But like when he fought, I forgot who he fought. But um, when he fought at the MGM Grand, one of his stipulations for the fight was he can only drive certain colored cars in certain cities. What? What? It's like something about him. So like if he's in New York, he needs a white car, and if he's in Vegas, he needs a black car. So he had it in his contract <laughs> when he was joking, fighting. Right? No, that he needed a black Bugatti and he needed a white Bugatti. If he if they want him to fight there, that had to be in his contract. So they bought him a black and a white Bugatti. One for he can he has three. He has a blue one, a black one, and a white one. Three Bugattis sitting in his garage. <laughs> that's that's, that's nice. like the the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's just people, man. And like that's but like that's white what, ones in the shop. Hey, whatever, well, you gotta drive the black one. Into, no, man. man, I'm in yeah, the wrong city. You're into. I'm in the wrong fucking city, bro. What? <laughs> I said, whatever you're into, man. Well, that's why the whole thing was funny. Where like when Fifty Cent and him were getting into it, and Fifty was like, "I tell you what, bro, you meet, you read me one page from Harry Potter <laughs> without making one mistake, and I'll donate ten thousand dollars to ALS or whatever the joke was." And then like, no, did you see that whole thing? And like some some. Floyd posted two pictures of his of his last two purses his, from his fights, yeah. mm-hmm. and then Fifty responded by posting his vitamin check water, um, his vitamin water check, and he wrote like, "I didn't even have to fight for this. I just had to know how to read." He put something <laughs> like that because oh. check, because 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 Floyd posted two checks. One was like seventy million, and one was like eighty five million. And fifty posted his for like two hundred and eighty million from, from selling vitamin <laughs> water. And he was like, Look at that, bro. Like I just didn't know how to read whatever the joke I just was. Didn't know how to read. But yeah. So <laughs> I had so, to say vitamin water and smile into a camera. Yeah, right. So are there now are there um are there female racers in NASCAR? Um there was Danica Patrick who was racing sprint cars, but I thought she was Formula One. Am no. I wrong? No, no, no. No, no. she went She's into NASCAR. India, I believe. Right? She was no? she was Pat. I don't know. I don't really know. She was she used to she used Look, to race. Look, he's so disappointed in me. I don't know. I she don't like her. She used to race Indy and now she races NASCAR. <laughs> okay, I was backwards. Yeah. I was she backwards. She was in was Indy close. and then she transferred to NASCAR. Right, right whatever. Get in here. Get in here. See, this is mic. why. <laughs> don't know this. Hold on, shit. Special guest. Special guest. Period. So she was racing IndyCar, and now she races in Sprint Cup, which is NASCAR, the highest level of NASCAR. She's the only one racing right now, but there's a couple that are kind of on the way up with like Joanna Long races nationwide or Xfinity now, sorry, which is the next level what? below. Okay. Um, and I, I think that's about it. But in Indy, they have a couple of them like uh, Simona de Silvestro, um, <laughs> Pippa Man. We don't like to talk about her. Uh, that's a, there's a few. There's none of them that are really making waves. Danica's still the best one, which is something. But you're doing great. Keep going. So much disappointment over here. Gosh. Boyfriend, so disappointed. It happens. It happens. Um, okay, I don't, you know, I don't follow that. I watch Formula One and that's about it. Well, they're making a left turn. Yeah, right. Another I mean, the mic- NASCAR, you know, it's funny. Dude, I, for, I, I do like NASCAR. For how, like, for how much, like, you could say I'm redneck or whatever, like, I love fishing and I love shooting guns and I love all that shit. I just, I can't get into NASCAR. Like, and I've really tried. I hear that a you lot. You need to go to an event. I, I've been to events and, like, I get no, tickets. No, nothing, huh? Well, I, I've been to NASCAR and I've been to a lot of, like, I've been to the Toyota Grand Prix quite a few years. That's and, like, a lot different than NASCAR. Well, I know. But, like, it's still, you know, it's re- on any type of car racing. And same mm-hmm. thing with, like, car racing video games. Like, guys at work swear by, like, Gran Turismo and all that shit. And I cannot play those games. <laughs> I just, I can't do it. It drives me insane. I don't know. I think I think as a, as a fan, it helps a lot if you understand. What's going on. At least some of the strategy behind it. No, because I Because, like, no. any other sport, there's strategy. I guarantee that there's, there's so much going on in those, in those races. And yeah. not, I'm not driving left a bunch of times. Like I know it's like <laughs> he's you know, making like, a left turn. You gotta get like the draft speed, and you gotta get what's going. You know what I mean? I mean like, there's so much that plays into it. Mm-hmm. There's so many aspects of the race. I get it, and it's like hockey. Like I fucking hate hockey. I can't watch hockey on TV either. And <laughs> and I can watch I can watch hockey in person. What am I like pissing? Hockey, everybody? You're pissing really, everyone off in the background. Ho- no. Hockey's really fun to go get drunk at. But like no no don't get me wrong. Unless like, your I team watched loses. Goon. Have you seen Goon? It's not yeah. fun. What's Goon? It's when he's the he's the basically the He's the enforcer for the for the made up team. Like, have you seen that movie? No. Mm-hmm. no. So it's 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 like an amp- 
I don't get out my. I don't Stifler? watch a lot of movies. It's Stifler, but it's it's a Stifler. no. It's on, dude, it's on it's on Netflix. It's, it's on Netflix. If you want to fucking laugh your ass off, dude, watch this movie. So he's like a bouncer at a bar. Okay. And he's going and watching this amateur team, and he's and his friend yells something at one of the enforcers on that team. Mm-hmm. So the enforcer comes up. He's I'm gonna fuck you up, and he comes up out of the off the ice, starts walking to the stands because it's all minor league, and Stifler beats the shit out of the guy, <laughs> and then the coach, the coach like drafts him to the team. And this team, like, they all hate each other. They all talk shit on each other. And, like, once he walks in, they got these two Russian guys. And the Russian guy's like, no way you come out of your mama's pussy. It's so <laughs> tight. <laughs> like, and they just, what? you never seen the movie? Oh, no, of course. I already told uh, you I yeah. haven't seen it. Well, I mean. You know what's up, right? Yeah, I got you. It's funny. <laughs> you know what's up, right? It's funny. It's a good movie. Yeah, the, the way I described it, it's not funny. but So what he's saying is go watch it. Yeah, I'm saying watch it. And he ends up becoming, like, a really good hockey player. And, like, goes well, to don't a, spoil it. Well, why? Who cares? It's, spoiler. it's where it's going. <laughs> it's a uh, spoiler to anybody who can't fucking Google it. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, I just I don't do I don't do hockey. I'm not. You don't a, do hockey. You don't do racing. No, I'll do baseball. I love baseball, baseball all day. Yeah, I love. Um, that's what I fuck. That's BAs. the one I can't do. <gasps> is, whoa, 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 whoa! Rewind. Did you just? You I, said, I, again? I said fuck the A's. Uh, what? what team There's a Philippine in here. Play some money ball. Come on now. That's a great story. I, I watched all of that happen. I was in the stadium I'm sorry during that happened those games. To you. <laughs> you have no like the story is what makes fight, fight, fight. Being an A's fan so worth it. Like, yeah, you know, it's crappy and they can only, you know, afford to sign one year contracts with with players, but like I, I can't they, do baseball. Man. I heard if you oh, I heard so if you great. win. I, I heard it. if you like win games, you get more money. And then you get like better players, but the A's wouldn't know anything about that. Ooh. Because we start, you know, we're basically like it sucks because we're basically like training. <laughs> Stop it! It's mm, snarky look. Are you under saying that it's a rebuilding year? It's always a and, rebuilding year. Well, A's you know, and the, the A's the A's <laughs> start with these anything players. The they can only afford one year contracts, but they they make something and they've made it to the playoffs for several years in a row now. They're not that bad. I don't know team. about last year. I'm not, I'm not fucking around. They're actually a decent team. Exactly I, I for what know. they I, for what they you know the budget budget they have and what they have to deal with like baseball it's a great thing. story we, we see my team go we, watch Moneyball we pay millions and millions of dollars to get these high caliber players what are you a Yankee fan and fuck the Yankees <laughs> yeah. and, um, and everybody we get hates these, the Yankees not, but the Yankees hey, yeah. Angels, Angels fan oh, um, and we man. get these high caliber players and guess what they fucking suck <laughs> Pujols <laughs> and Hamilton and but we got Trout. I went to I went to a Trout's good. I went to grade school. I, I went to grade school with a lot of people. But I went to a grade school with another guy that plays on the Angels right now. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. Went to grade school with him. He actually went to uh he went to Canyon and then he went to S C and now <laughs> he plays for the Angels. But, that's cool. But uh yeah, wow. he's a really cool guy. Um The guy who installed my cable about a year ago he said that he me. knows Coco Crisp. No way. He used to go to school with Coco Crisp. No yeah. shit. Well, well, Orange County allegedly. Well, Orange allegedly County in like Southern California, we put out like a shit ton of athletes. Oh yeah, it's it's pretty unbelievable. Three guys that I three guys that I went to high school with, all three of them play in the NFL. It's just oh, wow. and, yeah, it's just. I went I went to high school with, with an NFL player also. Yeah, you went Aaron Core. Uh, two two NFL players. Well, there's Aaron <laughs> Core and there's um, Austin Pettis. Austin Pettis. Yep. See, I went with Matt Khalil, Ryan Khalil, two brothers. Mm-hmm. One's on the Panthers and one is on um, the Titans, Tennessee Titans. Okay. Um, and then Matt Slater, who's on the Patriots. And then yeah, we got a wow. we got wow. a couple guys. That, That's cool. Yeah. Um, Khalil played at SC during like the Reggie Bush years, so he's got Rose Bowl rings and shit. And he was such a good. He's he got like the center award, which is like getting the Heisman for uh, okay. a skill player. He's the highest paid center in the NFL. Oh, yeah, wow. and he plays for the. Somebody scrolling through their text really fast. What is that? <coughs> Margarita machine. Shut up, Margaritaville. <laughs> um, Nobody likes you. But yeah, so I we si- I mean, we signed like poo holes <laughs> for our for our baseball team, and I feel like. like <laughs> Poo holes, poo poo holes. But we did. <laughs> no, I wasn't gonna say anything earlier because I thought it was childish. But now that you've said it, oh, this is well, there's glad. nothing I'm off glad. limits here. Well, we did. Well, poo holes. Was stupid. I mean, like, basically, the topic of the whole last interview was was poo. I feel like yeah. it was a, it was an a reoccurring. It was actually an underlying topic. theme. Yeah, um, oh. obviously, she doesn't know how to do this. <laughs> but um, yeah, poo holes. Uh, well, we did the Blue Jays a fucking favor when we picked him up, and we got him, we got him off of their team. So you're saying a lot of words, and 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 I don't I don't know what. Let's they just mean. say this: I'm not, um, I am not um, an A's fan. 
a mo, which is um, which is slang for homosexual. I'm not a homosexual male. Oh. Not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with but, that. No, not that there's oh. nothing wrong with that. I don't care. <laughs> Just want but, to clarify. Um, no, I'm a I'm a firm believer, dude. I could care less if you're gay or if you're straight or whatever. Oh, whatever. I couldn't care less. <laughs> but um, Thank you, Professor Kaylee. Prof Kaylee. I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less. And I, I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less if you're gay or not. It's just, I don't like it when you rub it in my face. All right? Like, like what are we rubbing in your face? Like, like, like a gay pride parade. I don't have a straight pride parade. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I, I, I don't say this is a touchy <laughs> subject because look. Two more viewers lost. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't care. But what I'm saying is, care. I'm saying that it's just something that I don't care. I really don't care if you're gay. I have no problem with it. But I don't feel like it just needs to like be projected. I don't walk around like some machismo. I'm straight. Well, it's almost you know like I mean? the same thing as we have a Black History Month, but there's no White History Month. There's no white white privilege. There was um, there is. was a restaurant. I forget where the restaurant was, but it was it's got like Asian owners, and they're like, hey, you know, we have Black History Month, and we have these you know times to celebrate other uh, ethnicities, but we don't have like a white. So they had like a white day. Where they're like, okay, white people get 20% off or something like that. And people were all in a hubbub oh, over I'm it because sure. they thought it was racist. I'm and- sure. It's all racist. It, it's, Hands up, yeah. don't shoot. Hands up, don't shoot. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's funny. It is, I wrote a whole paper on that. And I was like, well, it's funny. Um, I actually got an A on this paper. It was for my, my racial. It was, last, it was six weeks ago. I wrote No, four weeks ago I wrote this paper. And it was about um, reparations, like slavery reparations. Oh, okay. And um, no, no, no. And I was like, look, I got no problem. Paying. Here we go. <laughs> no, what I was saying was. I got, I Shall got, we talk about the American uh, school system? No. You know how much you love that? that? Don't do it. But, but what, it, what, pissed me, <laughs> what pissed me off about the reparations was that like, it's like I got no problem paying it to somebody that was a direct product or a, a direct result of slavery. You know what right. I mean? Like somebody whose ancestors were actually slaves, they, des- they might deserve a little something. But then I wrote the whole paper basically talking about how the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you don't hear Jews who went through a Holocaust, went through internment camps, went through a lot of stuff, poverty in the United States. We threw them in ghettos. Well, not me, because I came, my family came over in the 1920s, but Americans in general, and you don't hear them asking for reparations. But you know what I mean? But it was, this, it was just a really interesting paper where I kind of examined that. And it, yeah, it went, went pretty far. So anyways, back to what I was saying. I'm not gay, but if Josh Hamilton knocked on my door and said, Jake, run away with me, and he carried me into the sunset oh. when I had a sash around my neck. <laughs> Took you off on a, on a Mustang. I've got, this, I've got this whole thing in my head. <laughs> like, <laughs> up in my head movies. Now, who is this? Josh Hamilton. Who's Josh Who's Hamilton? The, yeah. Well, I, I think I, I I'm good with faces. I thought you just said a baseball fan. Like, uh, you know, who does he play for? Josh Hamilton. Who does he play for? He plays for Texas now. That's why I don't know. But... He played for Texas, and he was actually – I might get the story a little bit wrong, but he was signed out of, t- out of uh, his high school as first-round draft pick, one of the highest-paid prospects ever. This dude was unbelievable. He was one of the best players that ever lived, and he was only 18, 19. He was like a Mike Trout type of guy and used an entire bonus on drugs. And oh, wow. And he was so good that they kept him on the roster – for him to like sober up for like two years, mm-hmm. then he came oh back. God. He kept dro- he was bombing it, dude. Like like good, like dropping bombs. He was hitting home mm-hmm. runs. So the Angels picked him up for some ungodly amount of money. I think it was like two hundred fifty million dollars for six years or something like that. Wow. And on his third year of the contract, he got back onto drugs. And what kind of drugs are we talking here? Like heroin and coke and Ooh. alcohol and drug, like drug, heavy, heavy heavy stuff. Drugs are bad. Well, he <laughs> had drugs bad. Okay. But he was he was so serious do about his sobriety okay. that he okay. actually paid someone and he paid this person that lived with him and like followed him around and like made sure that he didn't touch alcohol or he wasn't in the vicinity of alcohol. Wow. Like he was actually serious about it and then he just lost it. He just lost it. Wow. And that's why I, I really think like it's an addiction <laughs> and it's a problem. Yeah. But Definitely. I picture him with long flowing hair. Just like shirt, shirt and button right about Like here. Fabio? Or? Yes, like a Fabio type figure. <laughs> just carrying me. And I feel safe and warm. <laughs> like, safe and warm. You had a little southern twang there. I feel there. safe and warm inside of his bosom. <laughs> like, oh my God. But, um. Wow. No, okay, I so. I don't know. Maybe I just don't understand because I haven't seen the guy. That's we, we've checked a lot of boxes this episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool with it though. A lot of boxes that weren't there. Well, too. Something, well something you have to know about me, Miss Ashley, is that I went to an all boys school. Ooh, so how was that like? It was fucking amazing. We talked about it how long ago? Uh, two podcasts ago, I think, right? Was this like a Catholic school? Or? Yeah, it was an all boy yeah, private I went to Catholic. private school until high school. Oh, cool. Yeah. It wasn't an all girls school or anything, but. My sister went to an all girls school. 
The one that was just here. She was I don't think I she fucking hated it. it, dude. It sounds terrible. She's like, they're so catty. Mm-hmm. And like, it's funny yeah. because like, like it's somebody, some, she's like, yeah, that girl made fun of my hair one time. I haven't talked to her in 10 years. It's and I'm like, what? Yeah. It's yeah. Funny. There was a girl in high school who didn't like me because I simply didn't look like someone she would like. What? Yeah, it happened. Yeah. I believe it. What? That's high a school's, thing? High school's mm-hmm. a joke, man. High school's such an un- You know, I, I went to a private high school also and yeah. co-ed though. Yeah. He's a norm. I, He's one of those norms. <laughs> <laughs> He's a normal. And I, you know, I didn't get along with a lot of people in my high school because I wasn't like that in the right tax bracket. I just, mm-hmm. well, not even that, too. Oh. I just feel like high school is such like an awkward, just gross, like everybody's growing and maturing and getting, you know, zits and hair in funny places. And this but guy. But like they're, they're not maturing as much as they think they're maturing. So they think they know everything. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just like, it's awkward. Uh, high school is just an awkward yeah. deal all around yeah. but that's why i think going to the all, all guy school is like the best thing well first off like you ask me or any of my friends we're so incredibly um like confident in our sexuality it's not even oh like, my god mm-hmm. yeah and it's, if it's you hang out with these guys you yeah. better get with the program or it's they're gonna run you over and that's what i'm saying and, <laughs> okay and run me over okay. and that's what interesting I'm saying. choice of wording and that's what i'm saying i've got no problem with you know what we talked about earlier it's just don't rub it in my face it's you know, we're back on that topic. Literally? Quit checking right. the box, Jake. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Let's migrate. Let's no, migrate. I, I mean, I can't even imagine going to a school with one gender. I, I realize it sounds it odd, was, but... It was cool because, well, I, I hated it the first... Like, going in, I was like, oh, I'm going to be gay. I'm going to be gay. Like, that was my... That uh, was a real stigma. And it was it was a stigma. And wow. we got called gay our entire four years we were there. I mean, you got everywhere Just by you everybody else that didn't attend? Everybody that didn't go to the school. They didn't understand Oh, you it. go to this school, you're yeah. gay. It's like, well, not really, but like, thanks for judging me because of my school. Yeah. And it was everywhere. And it was something that we had to learn to either sink or swim. Yeah. You had to either learn to be like, okay, like I'm going to make fun of this and I'm going to go along with it or I'm going to let it get me. And there's yeah. guys that- You have that, to learn to laugh at yourself and Well, not even that, it. but there's guys that actually left the school because they couldn't take it. Like they could not take- the ridicule. The and ridicule. And I mean, everybody just drilled on us. Wow. We go to parties. Look at all of them together. Uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, um, hmm. but so my first two years, I hated it. And like I said, yes, that was an actual stigma. And, but you know, you're an uneducated, ignorant eighth grader. You know yeah. what I mean? Like who knows what you're saying or what you're thinking. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, uh, as I grew up, I was like, this is fucking rad. And then like <laughs> by my junior year, I loved it. And then my senior year, the acne cleared up and the braces came off and I was, <laughs> and I was like a football player and everything. So it all kind of like worked out and I was like, okay, this is pretty legit. Like <laughs> it was, it was pretty cool, man. But that's cool. That's very yeah, cool. that was a, uh, how do we get on this topic? I don't even know how we, Dude, d- I, I would have we rather gone down, to a school with like we went no down girls. A lot of rabbit holes. What? We went down a lot of rabbit holes. Yeah, this 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 podcast. We're, I like this one. We though. are definitely living up to our name being hopelessly off topic. Explicit. Um, and that and it's explicit. Yeah. I think this all came from. I'm women not cursing and racing. as much as I thought I would. You should drink more. Just <laughs> fucking talk. Who gives a shit? You're empty. Can you yeah. fill her up? Yeah, I'm sorry. I do yeah, have my little wow. margarita in a Moscow Mule cup glass. <laughs> so that's what I. Whoops. <laughs> wow, that is quite enough. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're very generous. Hey, can you not knock over our camera? Thanks, man. Long way. The whole world falls down. No, you can walk. Uh, everybody already knows you're back here playing video games. You don't have to like. You don't have to keep <laughs> it a secret <laughs> anymore. Like, they can, they can you know, literally like, see you. <laughs> we ran out of vodka. Ran out of vodka. Why is there vodka? You didn't pour the Ooh. whole bottle in. Yeah, I did. Oh. Wow. Yeah. That but sounds like a personal. What, problem. What's Ron Swanson's quote about vodka? It's a uh, clear alcohol is for rich women on diets. I love Ron Swanson. Ron Swanson is one of my my favorite, favorite fictitious character. Oh, yeah, I love him, dude. Fictitious character. Fictitious. The Careful. rock and mustache. You made up a new word just now. <laughs> Fictitional. <laughs> I know. I got grammar Nazi back here. <laughs> There's a good word right there. <laughs> hey, Girl. hey. I think we should definitely touch on number one. Yeah, okay. Well, I was kind of saving it because I didn't know like anything. Okay, so I was told um, by people that know you. Now, what is the story? There's an interesting story behind your father. Um, I want to hear this. I want to hear it. Just just talk. I don't know anything. All right, well. Ready, uh, go. Go. <laughs> All right. Hey, please um, let me into a really secret like aspect of your life. <laughs> like, I really appreciate that. <laughs> you know, it, it's something that I might have been sensitive about years ago, but it's just, it's kind of funny now in a twisted way. Um, but my dad is a con man or was. 
allegedly. Um, allegedly is a big word on this show. Allegedly. I feel like this is going <laughs> to be used heavily during this conversation. It's a reoccurring theme, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly it's a allegedly. reoccurring theme. Yes. Allegedly. But, uh, allegedly. um... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's owned many businesses and has been partners in many businesses. And um, there was one in the Bay Area called Econo Page back in the 90s. It was a pager business. And uh, he was actually... Pager business? Hell yeah, dude. Is there a payphone bank? (laughs) Is is this hotel hotel beeper friendly? (laughs) Not getting uh, a cig on my beep. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What's that from? Hangover. Oh, yeah. Not getting a cig on my beep. (laughs) <laughs> Dude, I think I'm getting sick. I can't laugh. It makes me cough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so he was um, he was paying himself about five hundred thousand dollars a year, Whoa. and uh, was investigated by the FBI because he was selling you know five year, ten year contracts, whatever it was, and then closed his doors the next day. Uh, so FBI showed up at my mom's door at one point and had you know files with my grandparents in it, with him in it. Um, saying, you know, what's going on? Tell us the details. They had uh, an audio recording, I believe, of him <clears throat> saying or requesting for someone to break somebody's legs. That's always good. Gotta always good. Um, so, yeah, he's he's got a, a long history. Um, actually, just a couple of years ago, LAPD gave me a call when I was still living in the Bay Area and uh, was just asking questions because I guess there was a threat to Bruce Buffer. Do you know who Bruce Buffer is? Yep. The UFC announcer. I don't know who Bruce Buffer is. There was a threat to his life. You can't say his quote though. Did you know that he trademarked? Uh, he uh, let's get let's ready, get to, ready bleep, to bleep. If you <laughs> really, it's <laughs> trademarked. trademarked. Yeah, he can sue you if you say it. <laughs> Even if you like cite him as a source. Maybe I don't know that, but yeah, he trademarked it. He trademarked that phrase. So wow, interesting. So don't say it then. Let's get ready to be. Yeah, you to have to fumble. Like, fumble. Like, <laughs> Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. We really are. It's true. <laughs> oh, my God. It's true. It's a true story. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so I received a call from LAPD just asking some questions, saying, you know, we received this, this threat. We want to see if it's real or not. Basically, he threatened to kill Bruce Buffer, allegedly. Why? Wow. The, why? What's the... What's um, the tr- his... <laughs> killing Bruce Buffer? <laughs> like, his whole thing was... The story... I feel like there's so much I'm missing here. That's why I want to like... It's... He's... N- <sighs> he's nuts. Like, there's a lot that I don't know it and don't like he's understand. He's brilliant, though. He's, he's a crazy guy. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Like, I, not... I wish, like, I had... He used to have a commercial for a book that he supposedly wrote, but never did, and was selling... Are we talking, like, a Jordan Belfort type guy? Like... I don't know who that is. The Wolf of Wall Street. Like I've never seen it. Oh my. You haven't seen Wolf of Wall Street? <laughs> no. It's, it's really offensive, but it's a good movie. I know. It's a great movie. I've heard there's a lot of F words in it. There there's Which I'm yeah. okay with. It's just, I, you know, I, I feel like I have to the there's doing was. coke out of people's buttholes. Like Yeah, that's like the opening scene, <laughs> yeah. right? That's there's what I a heard. couple of scenes that it's just like Okay, come on, guys. Like, that's how it was. <laughs> They're just doing it for the sake of talk to him about it though. He's like, no, that happened. Like that was true. Yeah. But like what 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 he did was he basically would would trade on penny stocks. Mm-hmm. And um, he would. You got paid fifty percent of your penny stock. So if you sold a dollar, you'd get fifty cents. Mm-hmm. And he walked in there. And this this guy, there's people in this world. I'm a firm believer that there's people in this world that can just talk and sell. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I've oh, met yeah. I've, yeah, I've met some of them in my life where I like for like for my industry, we started this new program about um, getting people to trade in their cars. And um, it's a whole program. You call these people with this script, and you get them to trade in their cars, right? This dude that was teaching the class on it, like I want to trade in my car by the time I was done listening to him talk, right? He was he was just <laughs> wow. He was just good. So then he goes, it's really All right. manipulative. Well, he just goes, I'm going to show you how this works, okay? And I'm like, okay, cool. So he picks up the phone, dials the first phone number. Some lady he's never met before in his just life, cold call, doesn't know anything about her. Cold calls this lady, hi, blah blah blah. Okay, I see you have a 2009, um, you know, blah blah blah. We're looking and this is from records from the dealership. Our own right? dealership, okay. yeah. And he goes, you know, blah, blah, blah. I just want to let you know, like, I've got a market for your car right now, okay? Now, if I could get you in a brand new 2015, you'd be making the same payments. We use your old car as a down payment on the new car. You know, what do you think? Would you be willing to come in and talk to me about that? Yes, I would love to. When can you, like, when can you see me? The very first call he made, he wow. gets her to come in and talk. And I was like, 
it was like it was like in the Wolf of Wall Street where they're like, how the fuck did you do that? These guys are sitting here hustling, trying to sell like five, ten dollars so they can make money. Wow. You really need to watch the movie. It's, it's yeah. actually a I'm not, yeah, good movie. I'm I, not ruining anything. Oh, definitely. I, the first thing he does is he sits down and the very first call he makes, he sells ten grand, and and that's so he insane. made he made five grand off of one phone call. Some people are just they have that ability that Dude, just, gift. And he if was you just call call good, it. man. He mm-hmm. was, and and that's how this guy was. Yeah. So that's why I, th- I feel like that's how my dad is. He's very. And that's why I say there's a brilliance smart and to convincing, it. He was but smart too. He wasn't. I mean, obviously he got caught, but in that world, no matter what, you're gonna get caught. Like that Bilzerian. Mm-hmm. You know Dan well, Bilzerian. Mm-hmm. His dad was like a Wolf of Wall Street type guy. I never knew that. You know Dan Bilzerian. Mm-mm. He's like the guy on Instagram that posts the chick of like he's like ripped. And he'll post like the pictures of him with like guns and like a big tank and no. have all these women around him. No, I never heard him. Oh well, he's like an Instagram celebrity, but his dad was like a Wolf of Wall Street type guy. Okay. That, Instagram what? celebrity. Insta yeah, what famous. The fuck is that? I, I, it's like really it's a like real that's thing. a that, I know it's a thing, but like why is that a thing? Why was being MySpace famous a thing? Oh, this guy has five hundred thousand friends on MySpace. Like, like God, don't even say God, MySpace. God, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> or like face, and it's funny too because like as I grow older, I'm like I don't want more fucking friends on Facebook. Like I'm tired of looking at my news feed. <laughs> like right? I see myself like unsubscribing to people on my news feed because I'm like this. Is what oh yeah, I me just went too. through a clean sweep care. and me I I too. had about a thousand friends and I got down to six hundred. Uh, I think I have a hundred and yeah. It was just it's you know people have, you don't like, talk to maybe anymore. Three or four hundred maybe, and they're oh, all like okay. high school friends, like all yeah. of them. Yeah. Like, I don't. I just. But yeah. But like, I'm. I'm literally. I could probably delete. I'm more. literally at the point now where I only have my Facebook account just to read the news feed to run the Whiskey Babble Facebook page. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I do it just to read the news feed. I, I do it just when I'm bored. Really? Yeah. If I'm at work, I'll I'll do it to just read the news feed. Like if I have like ten minutes to kill or something like that, oh, man, just to see like, like what's going on in the news feed. But yeah, um, yeah. I should say newsfeed again. Newsfeed. 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 Um, hey, but, what, what was that thing you like to read when you're bored? News. I think it was the oh. new, newsfeed. But um, yeah, Dan Dan Bilzerian. He uh, his dad was like a stock trader, made millions, billions, whatever, put it all into accounts, and then all of a sudden his son comes up out of nowhere as a professional poker player. It's funny because he classifies <laughs> himself as like winning the world poker tour, but nobody can cite what tour he won or like where he won it, it's so like just you know what i mean yeah and then he's done like a couple movies where he's been like in um he was in like a lone survivor he was mm. he was one of the marines in lone survivor <laughs> really? i'm not marines uh seals he was one of the seals in lone survivor and just right. one of the runes and uh, he was in another movie too but he's just like created this like alpha male complex and and he's like nobody it's all his daddy's money just illegitimate fame. Yeah, that's basically what it is. It's all like stolen fame. Like it's whatever. But it's like when I talk to my wife about keeping up with the fucking Kardashians, dude. Like uh. we were talking because I'm not gonna lie, I find uh. the whole Bruce Jenner thing really interesting. And yeah, uh, and like and uh. it's and it's funny too because everybody talks about how like he's doing it for the show. Like he was like he's transgendered, but he's doing it for like the views or whatever. No. And like you watch these films, these I don't I don't think he's doing it. For the views, I think the way he's doing it is. For but no, the no, no. Views. He talks. He touched on that, and he actually brings up. I actually really like Bruce, and and here's why: because you would like Bruce. I know, right? But <laughs> but but he's doing it. He's doing it on the show because he realizes, hey, with my celebrity and what transgendered people are going through, he goes absolutely, and and that's totally yeah. legitimate. Yeah. Maybe I can make some waves. But yeah. there's a scene, and this is when I realized it wasn't all bullshit. He's talking about. He goes, the hardest thing for me. Um, when I was becoming transgendered was, was cutting my hair. Mm. He's like, I always had to cut my hair to look like a man because I couldn't. And there's a scene that they played back from keeping up with the Kardashians like six years ago. This scene was, I think that thing's getting more frequent. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but Can you unplug it? It's like the the less you use it, the more angry. It starts like he gets angry at you. <laughs> like, and uh, finally, finally it becomes self aware. Just so everybody's out over. there, we're talking about a margarita machine that's over here that keeps <laughs> making a click noise. Um, it's, it's actually really a really cool though. margarita machine. Like I'm not gonna lie, I want one. Um, <laughs> but he, um, there's a scene, and it's like six years ago, and they're talking to him about cutting his hair, and they're kind of giving him shit. Cause right. his hair's like down to here and all the girls are messing with him. And he actually like starts crying. He's like, I just don't want to cut my hair. Like it's my identity. Like I don't want to cut my hair. And like nobody understood what he was going through. So that's when I'm kind of like, okay, he wasn't bullshitting. Yeah. Like he's really going through something, you know what I mean? And that's right. like, but I guess it's something that, from what I've read, it's something that he's been, I don't want to say upfront about, but something that he's brought up in the past to, I mean, even before Chris, Kardashian. Oh yeah. He brought it up with his first couple wives. So yeah. I, we've watched all the specials. I find, I find it interesting. My wife loves it. 
I find it interesting watching that particular special that all of the kids have admitted that they knew he was at least a cross dresser. Yeah, they saw something at really? one point. Yeah. Yeah, they, they like say, they say it. They flat out say yeah. it. Oh, well, I yeah. never watched any of the Ki- well, interviews. Kylie, I, just, I just read a little Kylie bit. and Kendall, his legitimate daughters were his like biological his daughters. biological daughters. legitimate daughters. Whatever. <laughs> his biological the ones daughters. That matter. Well, they um, the ones no, didn't pay they for were it. talking about how they, they they used to find makeup and stuff and oh, they used wow. to think he was having an affair. Because they didn't like know what was, know what was going, going on. on. You and would these, assume that he was having an affair before you would assume that he's. Well, yeah. Well, he was an alpha dude. Like Bruce yeah. Jenner was the Illegal. definition. He was like the Champion. man's man. Yeah. He was the like, definition of sports. Yeah. Like yeah. this fucking. He was a monster, and he was like. He has action figures. Like legit, he was on the Wheaties box, bro. He's got action figures. Okay. He's been <laughs> the Wheaties. Right? He is. Yeah. He really he is. Won the gold hours of yeah. Wait, what? With Scott Pruitt. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Back in the late eighties. Well, I did not know ever, that because I heard he was quite awful in a car or quad. Well, he wasn't great, but he was good enough to win. But didn't you see? Did you see that, that in the new Kardashians when he was polishing up his uh, his nine eleven? Oh, he has oh. a nine eleven. It's a it's a it's a monster car though. Do like, want? <laughs> I don't get Porsches. I've never been a Porsche fan. What? Yeah. Get out. I'm sure I'm gonna start some shit. But it's like cool. I can spend that guy right there. Hey, I guys, hear hear me out there. Hear me out there. I can spend thirty thousand dollars on one car. Or I could spend $100,000 on a car that looks exactly the same as the $30,000 one. The only difference is the engine. That's my problem with you Porsches. You know what else you could do is if... if <laughs> wait, you know what else you could do with Porsche is their, like their, their line of like branded products called Porsche Design, mm-hmm. which is their engineers when they're busy not designing the same car over and over. Uh, <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they design... They design everyday products, and they have a full line of like socks. Porsche designs Por- everyday Porsche products. Porsche design. Like, hey guys, what are we talking? This. this cost me sixty-five dollars. Are you fucking kidding what is me? This? Does it? Does it blow you while you this drink is, your coffee? Like, this is something I would spend like? five dollars so on. How much at are the socks? Ralph's. The socks were thirty-five dollars, but they're the most amazing socks I've ever had. Thirty-five dollar pair of socks. Bullshit. The same I mean, as a pair of Hanes socks. I don't think I've ever spent thirty-five dollars total on all the socks in my life. Porsche what? design. Porsche. They say Porsche design on them. I think socks are expensive if they're more how than five dollars. How much are the pa- like? Okay. I've never even heard of this. This is all new to me. Okay, I, I was in um, Vegas a few years ago, and in the mall that they have My there, lady's asleep, and it hurts so bad right now. <laughs> oh. I told you to stand up after the first episode. God. Um, in the mall there, they have a Porsche design store. Which mall? In, in Vegas. Vegas. In Vegas. That makes sense. It's on the Strip. Um, huh. They have a Porsche. It's like all high-end retailers. Like, yeah. Um, they had a pen, a ballpoint pen, regular clicky pen mm-hmm. says Porsche on it 135 bucks I'm getting some help on my leg is, is it made out of platinum no like, no no I've is seen the, the ink like from a I've giant the, squid it's, a, it's actually made of unicorn tears <laughs> this oh okay I've I would to totally the, be hundred uh, whatever dollars for that yeah. I've been to the poor store on the Champs de la Champs de la I think is how you say that's it that's a lot that's of French words, words. And, uh, and that uh, that was ridiculous yeah yeah you know that they're saying there's new evidence in the Paul Walker crash that they say it was his tires. His tires were 10 years old. That's what the problem was. Were they were they matched perfect and staggered special? What? <laughs> <laughs> I just put Days some, of Thunder. I just put some new shoes on my uh, my Prius. <sighs> new I think shoes? they're called cum hoes. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Is that what they're? <laughs> Is that what they're called? Cum hoes? <laughs> what is it? K- K- Kumo? Oh, Kumo. Oh. Kumo. Oh, there's an accent, Mark. I get yeah. it. <laughs> I know it's tricky. It's Trying to Americanize it. <laughs> oh, my God. We are so off topic. Kumos. No, I, did. I just put Kumos on it, though. TireRack.com. That place is freaking legit, man. Not sponsored. Is Not that a sponsor? Sponsored. Yeah, no, right? I wish it was a sponsor, but... <laughs> No, someday tire. someday hopefully we, we, Rack, we, we can back. dream right yeah we can dream <laughs> <laughs> so what um uh. wait, what was, yeah so they're saying his tires uh the tires were 10 years old and they're saying they're bad tires 10 years old on i don't even think that car was 10 years old that yeah, was what car it was like an 04 wasn't it no it was porsche was that it? that paul walker died in it was a oh, Porsche. Was a GT. Yeah, it was at least 10 years old. Okay. Yeah. It's an old, they don't make them, they haven't made them for 10 years, right? Yeah, no. It, yeah, they haven't made them for a long time. So they never got the tire yeah. swap, now they're saying that's why? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, that's still their own fault, right, for not 
Yeah. yeah. Everybody tried to blame the car and, and Porsche was like, no, like, yeah. come on. <laughs> no, there's one thing I will give Porsche. It is like freaking perfection. Like their cars are unbelievable. And that's like Porsche. Like, yeah, it wasn't our car, bro. Like <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it was something else. And they're saying it was the tires now. Hmm. Yeah. I just think that's really interesting because that was a hot. How button. did they uh, deduce that? I mean, did they? I think they looked at the treadwear and then there was like eyewitness accounts that had like worked on the car and they wanted to put new tires on it. And they said, no, like we're taking it out for a drive. And what like do they, they do? Donuts in it? No, they took Probably. a turn going. No, they were, they were racing. They're racing it. They took a turn doing 140 or something like that. They were doing it. Was a like it, 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 was a, it was a charity event. But I, I mean, like on a regular basis, they're like, hey, let's they just never do drove it. Like, it just it was like a it was like a which car. that explains why it's 10 year old tires. Yeah, it, never it was never car. driven. It was you don't drive that car. It's <laughs> they don't make it anymore. Yeah, So let's let's not drive it for that long. Tires are shit. And we'll go 130 miles an hour. They had two dollars tires. Tune. Bullshit yeah, yeah. Ha, asshole. Ha, ha. No one likes to tune ha. here. That's funny. <laughs> Bullshit asshole. No one likes to tune here. Yeah, well, gonna know, Chris. Hey, hey, hey. It doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Winning's winning. This is this is inspiration. I don't have any money, but I got the pink slip to my car. And if I win, I get the money and I get the respect. <laughs> what, what, what respect? Say? What, what does he say? He's got, uh, when he pops the hood to the, to the eclipse. Um, no, what does he say? I can't remember. He's got the the NOS bogger system and something. <laughs> Seal injection. Not a bad way to spend ten thousand dollars. <laughs> no, one of my one of my favorite scenes in that movie is is when he walks into the store and he and he and he, and he shakes his hand like this and he goes, "I need NOS. I need NOS." <laughs> now me and the mad scientist got to rip apart the block and replace Everybody's the piston rings you fried. <laughs> You're lucky you didn't blow the welds on the intake. <laughs> there aren't welds on an intake. Well, did you see the one where his um they were like breaking down the Fast and the Furious and they're showing like that his car is blowing fire out of the exhaust and he's not even shifting, <laughs> but like the way the camera work was done, like or like when they when they show the gearbox and it has like 32 gears. Have you seen that? <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty that's a pretty uh, famous one. Yeah, it's a funny one. The Fast this. and Furious transmission. Dude, I love those movies, man, though. They are great movies. They do it, like we talked about, they do what they're supposed to do. They entertain. Like, and you know what? Their paychecks don't lie, so. Yeah, the movie, I mean, Seven, maybe wild, Paul Walker's deal, but. Wildly freaking successful. Yeah. Every Pardon? single one of the movies. Every single one, dude. Yeah. <laughs> this baby's got 500 horsepower. Congratulations. You can read the owner's manual. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back, back on topic. So back to women in racing. No, con man. Con man. The con man. <laughs> okay, so tell me more about that. I, I mean, know, like, I still hell? don't know anything. Yeah. Uh, you really haven't told me anything. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm only able Maybe to tell you as much us, as bro. I know. It's, it's very, like when the LAPD called me, they actually, in his file, had practically nothing. Um, so he was good enough to, so to get away with were, what he's done. They he's, were he's fishing dealt, for stuff? Yeah, well, I mean, they were trying to... to decide whether or not this threat was legitimate or not so they asked me you know does he have any guns in his home blah, just to blah, retouch blah. because we went so off topic what was the what was the threat bruce buffer. um oh yes uh, he threatened allegedly threatened to sorry. kill bruce buffer um right. for i don't know if i'm I, I don't like saying this but the reason that he wanted to do this or, or had allegedly threatened to do this was because he said that bruce buffer r- raped korean girls Ooh. Um, my dad, ever since my mom has dated nothing but Asian girls, so uh, he's he lives actually, I believe, in Koreatown. Last I I heard. So, um, huh. anyways, so that's the whole reason behind it. But yeah, LAPD called me while I was still living in the Bay Area and just trying to decide whether or not this was a legitimate threat. So they asked me, you know, if, does he have any guns? And I mentioned, you know, last time I was there, I saw steroid needles. He used to be a bodybuilder, so he's basically taken steroids his whole life. Wow. Um, yeah, so that that was a that threw me, you know. I the whole Bruce Buffer thing was a big deal, but he's constant. He's had so many different businesses, and his he's been involved in these books that he's supposedly written but never did. Uh, bitcoins, oh, good things old like bitcoins. that. Trip, man. Yeah, I, yeah. But yeah, you know that still to this day, after all the reading I've done and everything, I still cannot figure out how to actually get bitcoins. <laughs> it's really easy. I can't figure it out. It's super simple. I, love it. I don't want any, but I'd rather actually go buy gold or <laughs> hey, silver. Hey, you should go talk to my dad. <laughs> no, I'm all right. Hey, okay. <laughs> so let me ask you this. 
growing up, did you know about all of this stuff, or did yeah. is, were you or guys was this something that like? Up? Um, there was a period when I was about six years old where my dad had a lot of money. This was when he had the econ- econo page business. Let me stop you real quick. How old were you when he was out of the picture? I, I mean, my entire life, it's been spotty. He okay. was no, supposed well, to have me every other weekend, but like, it was... I think like, arrested. Like, like, how long... He like, was never arrested. He was never arrested. I mean... That, that I don't I know think we of. covered that. Is, is he his, incarcerated? Him and my or, mom or, actually divorced when I was about a year old. Okay. Um, but as far as any of the charges that have, he's been that have been brought to him, uh, he's is he, he incarcerated? We have wealthy, or, we have wealthy or, family uh, okay. in Europe, and I believe I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure that they paid for his attorney to get him out of the things that he's been in. So I think money's yeah. played a big role in keeping him out of jail. Um, it should be like a bitchin' story, I think, like an autobiography. Right. You know, I've more, actually thought of that. It need a lot more facts of, than what we're being told right now. Yeah. But. Well, I wish I wish I had more information. I'm Ashley I'm only able to give what I know. Tells all. <laughs> it's true. The yeah. real story. So, okay. So growing up, back to what before I c- cut you off. <laughs> but he was so it, like, did you guys know you had money growing up, or did he try to keep that on the DL because no, no, it was no, no. it was illegal money? No, he's the type of guy who would love to show off that he had money. So he had every time I saw him, which was maybe a couple times a month at Tops, uh, he had a fancy new car. He had Jaguars, um, Lamborghinis, Ferraris. Lamborghini Mercy. He had a yacht at one point, and he had a guy that worked on his yacht named Garvey, and he used to tell me that he was a pirate. Uh, good old Garvey. So yeah. whenever we'd take it out in the SF Bay, we'd like pass a... by this island, and he'd be like, oh, Garvey hides his treasure on that island. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> Where else would so, he hide it? <laughs> I mean, I have good memories, he but at the same time, I didn't understand how he got it. under that's a freeway overpass. That, well, that's all that matters is the memories, right? Well, for the most part, I mean, there's a lot of, obviously, you know, not so good memories. Like, oh, mom, why doesn't dad want to see me? The Being a child and not understanding why... Your dad didn't want to see you. But I mean, as when I did see him, like, yeah, he, he basically would like, oh, hey, I'm going to buy you a bunch of stuff to make up for it. So, so you like try to like, like buy that. That's common, isn't it? Like buying the love or whatever. Like, yeah, that that's his way of mm-hmm. love, I think, is to try and buy it. So growing up when he had that money before everything went down and the FBI started investigating him, uh, you know, that's how he would do it. He'd buy me video games. He'd, you know, take me out on the yacht, stuff like that. Hmm. But uh, really interesting. Yeah, FBI. Just to, just to clarify, it down. He's incarcerated or not incarcerated? Currently, he is not incarcerated. To your knowledge, right? To my knowledge, um, he he's he's tried to be in contact with me several times. I just don't. I don't reply. Now, now, do you not? No, like, do you not? Re- I know we're getting kind of heavy here, but oh, it's fine. It's do you fine. not? Do you not reply because of because of what you know or because of? You don't feel like talking to him? You feel like he's going to hurt you again? Um, I just, I, I can't believe really anything that he says. So it's so more he's of that, a... So he's that, like, like, in your mind, he's that big of a liar. Yeah, I think it's pathological. I, I think half the time he doesn't even realize that he's lying or, or doesn't think of it that way. I don't so know. So it's just so natural. We knew a guy like that in high school. Like, it was just so natural to lie mm-hmm. that it, it became, like... Who he was. Who he was. You just, hmm. he knew how to, like... And, but it weren't even, like, reasonable lies. I'm like, dude, like, you... No, you didn't. Mm-hmm. No, I benched 375 pounds in the, you know what I mean? It's like, like no, I just saw you. No, you didn't. No, no, you, no, you didn't. You know what I mean? But like, he, and he'd stick with the lie. Yeah. Huh. Like he had, he, he had like thought that he, like the lie was, it was a trip. Oh yeah. There's definitely lies that there's stories that he's told me and then I've gotten the truth elsewhere and I, it's, he totally believes it. Is like, it always somebody else's fault? For him? Oh yeah, definitely. Actually, I remember, um, I was probably about I don't know, 17 years old, and he turned to me, and I, I don't remember what the conversation was about, but he basically told me I was being manipulative. And I was like, what are you even, you're just reflecting yourself on me. So he just, he's always the victim, and everybody's out to get him, and he, uh, I think he's a very smart <laughs> person. Margarita milk. He's, <laughs> he's a very smart it's person. It's like really serious, and then the margarita machine. It's like, yeah. it's like, hey guys, I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> Thirsty? <laughs> Pat, I see you over there working up a sweat. <laughs> oh, but, uh, yeah, I think if he applied his, his smarts to something good, it would be, you know, it'd be awesome. But he's, well, that he's, that's certain, his whole life. He's just, I don't but know. But that like, takes a doing. certain degree of intelligence, I think, to, like, be able to start a company from scratch and actually. Yeah, it's, they're, mm-hmm. like, scary, mm-hmm. intelligent people. He's that's scary, a, intelligent, and, like, a dark, and that's. It's scary how smart he can be in yeah. certain aspects. And a lot of people like that, that's like 
how they are. They're scary, scary, mm-hmm. intelligent, like probably some of the most intelligent people on the planet. Mm-hmm. But the way they apply it is just it's just completely twisted, twisted. It's just yeah, twisted, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's how, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. There was a I mean, I don't know the story in detail now. I don't remember it. But there was a time, I guess, when he convinced everybody that he was crazy and he checked himself into a psych ward and just cra- <laughs> like I have, there's unbelievable <laughs> stories that I've heard that I couldn't even delve into because I, I don't remember the details or it's just so crazy. But wow. he's oh, yeah, he could totally have a book written about. Well, you look at those people like Warren Buffett and stuff who like have made billions of dollars and then Warren Buffett gave it all away. And made it all back. Like there's mm. people that just no. know. Yeah, exactly. It's, and that's a trip. And like you, even if they sit there and taught us it for 10 years, we probably still couldn't do it because it's just that type of person and that type of like, and it sounds like that's the type of guy your father was. Like you really, need, I feel like Wolf of Wall Street would apply like to your situation. Like you really need to watch it. Oh, definitely. I would, Obviously I'm, I'm not trying to say I know your life or anything like that. No, but no. From no. what you've told me so far, I feel like that movie would Jake apply. Jake's psychiatrist. Yeah, you know. <laughs> tell me, tell Dr. Me, Jake. Tell me about your father. <laughs> <laughs> On this episode of Dr. Jake. <laughs> tell, me, tell me about your father. <laughs> no, nah, I think he's just one of those people that, that um, almost in the same sense as Mayweather, like money is what defines him. And I was going to say something earlier when you were talking about how like he would try to like buy your love. Mm-hmm. And stuff. I, I kept mm-hmm. it on the DL, but no, no, <laughs> no. Need. But that's what I think of. Like, yeah, like there's like Floyd, like to keep his friends around, like buys them watches. And like, that's how he like, that's how he shows affection. It's so weird. Hmm. That, well, like, hey, if I buy you things, that means we're friends. But right? that's what weirds me out too about like where our culture is at. Like, that's why they say there's so much. Rogan said it the best. And he talked about it a few weeks ago. Um, simply speaking about like the gun issue where he was like, America has a gun. Uh, America has a mental health problem disguised as a gun problem. <laughs> yeah. And I think Absolutely. America, America in itself, not just guns, but money, property, everything. I think that there's this, this disconnect where that's become our driving force. And it's not like, you know, in Europe, I've you know been to Europe and everything like that. It's, it's a completely different world over there. And they just want to be with their family and, they have summers off. Regular jobs have summers off. Oh yeah, There's, they have. Must be nice. Their vacation program through work is entirely. They get like than six ours. months off a year, like yeah. through their work, like vacation program. And us, it's twelve hours a day. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're like, one of the few countries that is like that. That grinds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like grinds the people into the ground, and it and, it, and it's all. Why do we do that? Oh, because someday I can be the American dream. Someday mm-hmm. I can have a, a Rolex and have my house and have a... <laughs> Consumerism. Yeah, it's true. And that's what we... And that's like we're bombarded with it, dude. Yep. I remember I was reading like... You see something like 100,000 advertisements a day. And it's... 100,000? Really? Well, when they say 100,000, they don't mean Good like an ad on God, the TV. man. They mean it's like... It's everything. Well, it's look, Facebook. It's look, dude, oh, Twitter. It's Dasani, everything. Apple, GoPro. That's what they talk about by advertising. How everything, oh, is okay. like, like product placement, like product placement oh, is every yeah. TV is. shows. Have yes, tons of product. Everything placement. is. You see a hundred thousand a day is what they say on average. Like think wow. about that. That's interesting. Insane. Brainwashed, uh, basically. You are, man. Got to think outside the box. Yeah. That's why Rogan always preaches DMT, bro. <laughs> DMT. Bro? No, I've never tried that once, shit in not a million never. years, dude. Never in a million years. Nope. <laughs> I, I, I I am interested in doing. Speaking of Rogan, he talks a lot about the float tanks. Yes. I would be interested would in trying that. that. Do you know who Joe Rogan is? He's one of the announcers for UFC. He's an announcer for the UFC. He's a comedian. Oh, yeah, the guy who's like had drugged up half the time, right? He's not drugged no. up. He, he did Fear he, Factor. He knows exactly yes, what he's doing. Yeah. He knows exactly. He's, he's like kind of cuckoo no, a little he's bit, brilliant. though, right? No, he's, he's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. No? Yeah. I, I, there, wasn't there like a whole drug thing with him? Yeah, he's big or, time well, I mean, he's marijuana. A, he's a pothead. He's a huge proponent. I was thinking more like Coke. No, no, no. No, no, he didn't do that shit. Because there was something like, I saw that like, was like whacked He's out. like a professional. He's a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, a black belt in oh, taekwondo. Wow. He's like. I always wondered, like, why did they have him announce it? Like, what the hell does he know? He knows what the fuck he's talking about. He knows, about. <laughs> he knows no a little joke. something. Okay. But um, what were you saying? Uh, Rogan and. Oh, the float tanks. The float tanks. Yeah, I, I, I want to do the float in tank. Tying, in I want to do the cryo freeze. What is a float tank? So okay, a float tank sensory is, deprivation. It's a, sim- a sensory deprivation tank. Basically, it's like this big pod full of water, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It, you float. Mm-hmm. So you, you lay down in this tank and you float, and they close it up, and it's completely it's devoid. You and your it's completely <laughs> devoid of uh, light and sound. I don't like that. And you are left with nothing but your own thoughts. I and, feel like that's bad the, if you're claustrophobic or something. Yeah, I mean, 
it's the whole it, point to overcome. Not everybody, like not everybody can do it, but but basically the the thing behind it is is because you're completely separated from all outside stimulus mm -hmm. that you you connect with your your inner consciousness you really on like a different level. And he'll like, take DMT and do it, and like. Like you, f you figure things out about yourself that you didn't even know was a problem. Yeah. Just simply by depriving yourself of your of other every, senses. Of all the other bullshit, yeah. all the other noises. Like no outside and stimulus, and no sound, no light, nothing. You're just floating there. How is that any different from, I don't know, laying in bed with the lights off? Because everything. there's still outside stimulus. There's everything. You can hear the air conditioner running. You can you you know you can see the clock on the bed squeaking. On, you can hear the sheets ruffling. Exactly. You're in complete. You and your thoughts. Hmm. It's a trip. That's dark. He also does the the zero the sub two hundred cryotherapy. I want to try that zero. too. I've seen videos of people doing that. Yeah, I want to do the cryotherapy. I don't know. They really say bad. good things though. Well, it puts your body in survival mode, and then that's why it's like it's so good because your body goes into survival mode and it puts all of your blood in your heart. Mm -hmm. In your brain, and then when you get out and your body warms up again, all your blood goes back to your. It's like thank God, and it's like ah. it's a trip because your, your body is yeah. like producing like different chemicals to get to to survive, yeah. and then once you're out of the tank and you're not in survival mode anymore, those chemicals go back into your bloodstream, and you're like ah wow, and like wow. they focus because not because now it doesn't have to worry about surviving, it puts the chemicals and the nutrients to your injuries. To help you survive longer so if you have like a bum knee and you go in the cryo tank and you come out everything's kind of flushed to that knee to wow. help it heal better and stuff yeah he's nuts man some of the shit like he he's done and like he's read it like I've, it's it's insane mm -hmm. when he talked about um uh how they told it's him really he had, interesting he stuff. had a fused discs mm -hmm. in his back he's a full believer in like no medicine i'm gonna do this like fuck wow. doctors and he like he had this back problem and he's like yeah you have to fuse discs in your back and and it was this whole big thing. And he That's ended up joke. just doing like like home remedies, and his back is perfectly fine now. But yeah, wow, it's insane. I'd like to read up on some of his secrets. Read it. I know some people that actually have, like some people in my family have fused discs and just these aches and pains. Maybe it's insane. maybe well, he has listen to the his secrets. podcast. That's, Start listening to his podcast. Oh, he has a podcast. That's what all the stuff we're talking about. He talks about on his podcast. We got all this. The time. We got uh. didn't now because I started listening to Rogan. And then I got you on it, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I got Mike on it. Yep. And they all started listening to Rogan. And now everybody, all of our friends. It's really to it. interesting. Huh. It's like, really good stuff. It's he's really an interesting. interesting guy. He's I, insane. It's, I feel it's, like he's I definitely mean, it's worth very, a Okay, it's, it's very heavily, like, fight-oriented. They talk a lot about jiu-jitsu and that, yeah. that kind of stuff. Well, I watch UFC. I mean, I wouldn't say that I have this incredible But just incredible before one, because, like, a, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, it, they get kind of turned off mm -hmm. when – that's the only subject they talk yeah. about. Yeah. But it's a very heavy, prevalent subject on his Did you podcast, ever hear about when he, like, left his family for, like, <laughs> no. a year and he went and lived in the mountains? No. <laughs> it's a true story. This no, I it, can totally it, picture him as mountain man. No, though, it happened, like, like five or six beard. years ago. And, like, he told his wife and his kids, he was like, "You because he's rich. He's like, you, got, you guys are going to be fine. I need to go, like, be one with myself. And for like a year, he went and lived in the mountains and like only hunted. Because he came, the only reason I know about this is because he came back to Kevin and Bean and he still had his beard and everything. Because <laughs> he didn't shave or anything for a year. And Kevin and Bean were like, oh my God. <laughs> Damn. He's like, he's like oh. dude, you look terrible. He's like, I wanted to see if I could do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the hell? But so we went full on like survivor man mode, in the hunted mountains. his own squirrels. Everything. And I could do that. I could survive. That'd be easy. Yeah. Really? The, the actual act of surviving isn't the hard part. It's the mental aspect. Yeah, it's the loneliness. Because humans, by nature, are social creatures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we we thrive on interaction like this. This is like what humans are geared for. Mm -hmm. It's when you're alone by yourself, left yeah. with only yourself. That's when it gets a little dicey. And that's the hard part. Yeah, I could totally picture going just stir crazy. Like you know, the the act of alone. actually, you know, living in the wild and and it, it's tough because you know we're so, you know, spoiled mm -hmm. with what we have. Mm -hmm. But the 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 mechanics behind it and the knowledge behind it really isn't that difficult. Mm -hmm. What surviving? Yeah, yeah. Like lighting a fire is not hard with sticks. I mean. Okay, it's, I don't it's know. Put, hard, me in a, but, <laughs> put me in a forest or a jungle with sticks, out. and you I don't know if I can We're do smart it. enough to figure it out. Like it's in our DNA. I mean, it, we've been, you know, <laughs> freaking <laughs> bred for it for hundreds of thousands of years. 
I mean, I, I mean, I guess if, if you're put in that scenario where you have to figure it out, you're going to figure it out. Yeah. Definitely. You have an option. <laughs> it's yeah, your survival I mean, instinct survive kicks in. Survive or don't. And yeah, your survival instinct that. kicks in. Yeah. And it's really, it's it's bred into you. It's I feel like my survival instinct always kicks in when we're camping because I never have to poop for like three days. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> Didn't we talk about that when we were at the like, yeah. we were at the stone shack? <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, yeah. As soon as I get there, I think my body knows it's like, okay, dude, like you're putting yourself in danger if you're gonna go out there and poo. So it puts itself. <laughs> what? In, yeah, it puts itself in survival mode. What so about I'm, that? Is dangerous. Because uh, you're. <laughs> didn't you? Snakes. You're exposed. You slickers? You're exposed I mean, to the elements. Uh, I, get wet on your yeah. I mean, the worst <laughs> thing I saw going camping was red ants. That's bad. That's why you squat. <laughs> Real bad. And you guys don't. Fire. You guys don't even have to squat. You just stand and so, point. I listen. Get the poop, man. You yeah. squat. Use those Sorry. quads. All right, I'm gonna say one more thing because I think this is gonna end the show. What I'm gonna say right now, <laughs> but I was actually listening to Rogan, and he had this specialist on, and she was the the doctor that like she had all the furniture taken out of her house because she believes like human beings were not designed to sit on couches and we're not designed to sit in chairs we're not mm -hmm. we're not Absolutely we're designed to like like squat on the ground we're designed to like lay on the ground we're designed to sit on the ground with our back straight like we're not designed for any of this shit so she moved all the stuff out of her house and then and then, and then and then she talks about how she's like made her toilet so you could squat on the toilet because human beings it's better for your digestive human beings are not supposed to sit like this and shit yeah you're supposed to be squatting like when right? you when you poop your <laughs> legs should be like elevated you should be upward yeah, in a different position so yeah I, I i did it and <laughs> I, d I did it guys and guys my wife my verdict wife my wife found out and, and <laughs> <I> <laughs> we're, we're actually walking the dogs and the dog went down to squat and shit and i was like well that's the way you're supposed to do it and she's like how would you know and i was like i i, I did it and she's like <laughs> she's like when you <laughs> she's like when we get home She's like, I'm, you're not, you're going to do it dressed. You're going to show me how you squatted on that <laughs> toilet because I don't believe you. So I ended up getting back home and like squatting on it and showing her like how it's done. She's like, she's like, you're disgusting. And I was like, it's the right way to do it though. Like, it makes it easier and it's better for you. And, and then I was watching Shark Tank the next night and they had this thing no, called, they had this thing called the Squatty Shark Potty. Tank. It's called <laughs> the Squatty Potty. You'd Google it, dude. The Squatty oh Potty. God. You can buy a Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> And it and it goes wow. no <laughs> it goes stop. it goes under the toilet and you and it, so you can sit up like this so it's like like a step it's like a big step thing the squatty potty yeah ah. your legs should technically be elevated when you're yeah. sitting because that's the natural way to do it yeah. but it's natural position She's like, I cannot believe that you did that and I was like it worked great I <laughs> do it again like, <laughs> I'm a little concerned that almost every topic turns into poop of some sort <laughs> on your podcast sounds like a personal a personal problem personal right there personal problem. <laughs> Sounds like you're insecure with your own self. Yeah, it sounds like you're insecure with your own Everybody bowel movements. Everybody poops. I, it's, right. You know, it's natural. Hey. It's a book. What? Pucasso. That was a good one. <laughs> that's the that's the title of the previous <laughs> podcast. Pucasso. Nice. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Um, great guest with Ashley. I loved it. Um, very interesting conversations. And uh, <laughs> don't look at me. Look at them. I'm not, dude. They don't care. They care. <laughs> I've watched the videos and nobody looks at the the videos when they're. When they're talking, they're actually. How do you know you're not them? They're actually reading off of a list. Hey, uh, Mike, in my face. In how my do you face. know you're not them? What do you mean I'm not them? You're not the viewers. How do you know they don't look at the video? I, I watch the video. I treasure I my I treasure my viewers. Hey guys, gotta hey. break the fourth wall, man. Hey girl. Um. Hey, hey girl. girl. Hey girl. My name is Peter Griffin. That was a good one. That was good. That was a good Peter Griffin. That was good. Right there. That's a good one. Um. Okay, you guys. Quagmire. What? Quagmire. Yeah. No. <laughs> I can't. No, I, can't <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I tried. <laughs> I'm, no, I can't do it. Oh, uh, I can't. No, I can't do Chris either. I almost tried it. <laughs> I literally like people must think I'm like Cleveland. fat shit crazy. You I are. I can't do. No, nah. but like because I sit in my car driving and I'm practicing my voices and they're just like, oh, what the fuck? God. Um. Okay, guys. www.whiskeybabble.com. Um. Go there. Check out uh, the merchandise. Check out. The cool products we have. Um, by the time this airs, I think the raffle will be over, huh? Uh, what's today? Today is... Yeah, it'll be over. Okay, never mind the raffle then. <laughs> if you guys didn't enter, that's your fault. Um, you. Facebook.com slash Whiskey Babble. YouTube.com slash Whiskey Babble. Um, 
Twitter. I didn't mention Twitter on the last one. You didn't. At Whiskey Babble for the Twitter. Um, yeah, uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Audible. Dot com. Um, to get the trial, you go to audibletrial.com slash whiskey babble. Over 180,000 titles now. It That's right. It yep. used to be 150, right? 180,000 titles of uh, spoken word products. There you go. Um, also brought to you by Mamut uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, that is M as in Mary, A M U T E B J J dot com. Uh, go in there, ask for Bruno, tell them you heard about it on Whiskey Babble, and he'll give you a week free to try it out on us. Um, I mean, who wouldn't want to do that, Matt? We are literally it's free. We are literally paying for these people to go and train for a week for free. Right? It's I mean, out of our own pockets. Why would they not want to do it? That's true. It's not really, it's but not really. they're gonna go try it and have fun, and it's gonna be great. But um, gonna, I mean, I'm gonna try it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna. Try well, it. you're gonna try it before we film our I know. the next episode. You're gonna do the class. I'm definitely gonna try it. Um, I've, I've wanted along. to try it for a long time. Maybe Pat can be our second guest. That I'm night. definitely probably gonna poop myself while doing it, but <laughs> nah. It's all light. <laughs> it's all light stuff. You guys, Lunch. you guys won't be allowed to spar until the third class. So doesn't matter. I'm still gonna poop myself. All right, guys. So thank you for listening. We hope you all like it. Whiskey babble out. You didn't cheers. Uh, oh. Are we still going? We- cheers. Hold on. Cheers in front of your mic. Ready? There we go. Cheers. <laughs> all right. Whiskey babble out.